30 to 40 minutes, um, not knowing that you wanted to make some concluding remarks, but um, there will be an opportunity for that on Wednesday. Ms. Mr. Mistich. Good evening, Your Honors. In our opening statement in March of 2008, we told you about the principle of Occam's razor and that all other things being equal, the simplest answer is usually the best one. We told you that we would provide you with the simple, straightforward explanation of the evidence while the prosecution would offer you nothing but convoluted conspiracy theories. After two and a half years of trial, we can safely say here today we were right. We told you so. OTP's final brief and now final argument can be summed up in one sentence. Your Honors, you cannot believe your own eyes because nothing is as it appears. The prosecution's brief is written not from the perspective of prosecutors sworn to an oath to seek justice and the truth without regard to whether that will result in conviction or acquittal. Rather, it is written from the perspective of the advocatus diaboli, the devil's advocate. The role of the advocatus diaboli in the Roman Catholic Church was to argue against the canonization of a candidate, to take a skeptical view of the candidate's character, to look for holes in the evidence, and to argue that any good deeds attributed to the candidate were fraudulent. That's exactly what the prosecution has done here. Like the advocatus diaboli, the prosecution argues as if it is their task to take a skeptical view of General Gotovina, to look for holes in the evidence of his innocence, and to argue that every good thing he did to prevent and punish crime was fraudulent. Moreover, the prosecution's brief does not allow for the possibility that even one person in the entire state of Croatia did a good thing, or that he did it for the right reasons. It is unfortunate that the prosecution, very early in this case, lost sight of what its true role should be in the pursuit of justice. We will show you on sanction now this example from paragraph 7 of the prosecution's final brief. This encapsulates the prosecution's case. Tujman recognized that the international community although largely not opposed to Croatia's use of force to take back the Krajina, would vigorously oppose its ethnic cleansing. With these considerations in mind, Tujman and other JCE members took steps to force the Krajina Serbs out of Croatia in a manner that would mask their real intention and later allow the Croatian authorities to plausibly deny responsibility for the exodus of the Serb population. That is their case, Your Honors. Plausibly deny responsibility. What is the prosecution really saying in that paragraph? This was invisible ethnic cleansing. Over 100,000 people, according to the prosecution, were ethnically cleansed. But those devious Croats did it in a manner that no one could see it. And they say, plausibly deny, because they know that you, the judges, if you rely on your eyes, will find that it not only is it plausible, but likely that Croatia did not ethnically cleanse the Serbs. So the message from the prosecution is, don't believe your own eyes. It was invisible ethnic cleansing that no one else could see. It was so invisible that even the Serbs themselves who left did not know that the real reason they were leaving was because they felt terrorized by shelling. The evidence demonstrates that the international media descended upon Croatia before and during Operation Storm. It was in Banja Luka and Serbia, 
interviewing Kraina Serb refugees. And yet, not a single international media reported that anyone at the time claimed to have left due to shelling. There is not a single contemporaneous media report, UNMO report, NGO report, about a single person who claimed to have left Croatia because he left, because he felt terrorized by shelling. Over 100,000 people fled terrorizing shelling, yet the media did not contemporaneously record the statement of a single crying a Serb who said that. Compare this state of the evidence, Your Honors, to the prosecution's cases involving the shelling of Sarajevo, and you will be struck by the jarring lack of evidence. Unlike the Sarajevo cases, you have not been provided with the testimony of a single person whether viva voce, or hearsay, or through a media report who claims to have lost a family member in the widespread and systematic terrorizing shelling of civilians. Likewise, a year later, Human Rights Watch published a report on Operation Storm after interviewing refugees from the so-called Crying, and that is Exhibit D-183. And that entire report did not record a single claim by a single refugee who claimed to have left because of fear of shelling. Four years later, the Croatian Helsinki Committee report also did not identify a single account of a single crying Serb who claimed to have left Croatia due to fear of sharing the shelling. That's P2402. Serbian intelligence on the morning of 4 August failed to see the invisible ethnic cleansing was targeting civilians. That's D-389, in which the ARSK itself reported that the artillery attack was concentrated against, quote, the Northern Barracks, the ARSK Command, the Tzvik Factory, the Railway Intersection, and others. Despite the fact that the ARSK intelligence specifically reported its assessment on the morning of 4 August, the prosecution this morning argued that the Northern Barracks, quote, were not actually targeted as suggested by the defense. The prosecution apparently argues that not only are your eyes deceiving you, Your Honors, but the eyes of the ARSK intelligence operatives on the morning of 4 August were deceiving them as well. Alan Roberts didn't see the invisible ethnic shelling spreading terror through shelling, the, the invisible ethnic cleansing spreading terror through shelling that is seen by this prosecution trial team. In D-712 and D-1369, Roberts, those are media reports of Alan Roberts on the afternoon of 4 August, telling the international media that he, after he, having been in the town with General Ferrand, for a meeting with, at the ARSK headquarters, but before the Martic evacuation order, he told the media there, quote, that there was, quote, no panic amongst the civilians, close quote, and that, quote, it is rather calm, but people inside Kneen are concerned what may follow next, close quote. He, too, didn't see the invisible ethnic cleansing. Martic issued the evacuation order, D-137, for the entire civilian population in Dalmatia and parts of Lika. It failed to note the shelling of civilians as a reason for the order. Instead, he said the reason for the order was the threat to the territory and the threat of encirclement. Martic must not have noticed the invisible ethnic cleansing. Mrkšić was on Radio Belgrade on the evening of 4 August. That's exhibits D-106 and D-713. And he told Radio Belgrade that the evacuation was taking place to prevent the civilians from being encircled. He too failed to see that the Croatian army was shelling civilians and that an evacuation was required as a result. In fact, Mrkšić told this trial chamber 
that he thought the preparatory artillery attack on the morning of 4 August, which in fact was the heaviest attack, because by sunrise, artillery was used for, quote, harassment purposes only, was so precise that he thought it must have been conducted by laser-guided weapon systems. He must not have noticed the invisible ethnic cleansing the prosecution uncovered 11 years after the war ended. On the 15th of August, the chief of the ECMM mission in Croatia filed his report on Operation Storm and notably stated as follows at Exhibit D798, page 3, speaking of the reason of the departure of the Kraina Serbs. Quote, their departure seems to be final. The Kraina authorities, in particular President Martic, encouraged their citizens to leave, stressing that the Croats wanted the territory without its population. Nowhere in the entire report is indiscriminate shelling mentioned as even a possible cause for the departure of Kraina Serbs. Unmo and Utsiv poll did investigations specifically because of the allegations of indiscriminate shelling. And the results are in P64 and P228. And they found that the shelling of Knin was, quote, concentrated against military objectives. The devious Croats were so good, Your Honors, that both UNMO and UNCIVPOL couldn't find evidence of widespread indiscriminate shelling despite conducting a specific investigation into that allegation. Galbraith and his staff didn't see it. Neither did AG-18. Witnesses Flint and Akashi testified that they went to Kanin on 7 August, met the very same UNCRO personnel upon whose testimony the prosecution relies for its allegation of indiscriminate shelling. Flynn testified that he went to Kneen to, amongst other things, specifically examine the allegations of indiscriminate shelling. And when they came away from that meeting with the UNCRO personnel on 7 August, they did not believe that widespread, widespread indiscriminate shelling forced the departure of the Kraina Serbs. In fact, at transcript 1308, Flynn testified that to him, the exodus of the Serbs was orderly 